Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Introduction to Quantitative Chemistry module. This is video number 19 on the gay lussac Law. In the last video, we started to talk about the key variables that we use to describe the behaviour of gases. In this particular video, I want to start with two of those particular variables, temperature and pressure. Temperature is about the um, average kinetic energy of the particles. So how fast they are moving. An increase in temperature equals an increase in the kinetic energy of those particles. Pressure is, a, uh, I guess, partly about the space between the particles, but more about the number of collisions. In practice, it's not just the collisions between particles, but it's also between the particles and the walls of the container. Now, if we assume that all other variables are constant, so in this case, the volume is constant and the number of particles or the number of moles is kept constant. So if we don't change these two, then it follows that if we increase the temperature and we increase the kinetic energy of the particles, then they're going to be moving more quickly. They're going to be covering distances faster than they were before, which means we are going to increase the number of collisions between both the individual particles and the walls of the container. You can see on the diagram here that if we keep the number of particles the same and the volume the same, then the only way that we can um, have an increase in temperature and keep those other two variables the same is if we also increase the pressure. That is, we increase the number of collisions between the particles. Now, we can express this mathematically using gay lussacs law. The most important thing is that pressure and temperature are proportional to one another. As pressure increases, so does temperature. Mathematically, we can write an expression to show us exactly what's going on here. And that is the pressure initially, or at a time uh, one, divided by the temperature at that same instant of time is equal to the pressure after we make the change, such as increasing the temperature at that new temperature. P1 on T1 equals P2 on T2. We can obviously make these changes for a range of different temperatures and measure the pressure. But in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to keep the volume and the number of moles constant. So for a given volume, we know that pressure divided by temperature is going to be a constant, some value of K. One important thing about the gay lussac law, as we've expressed it here, is that the value of temperature should be in Kelvin, not in degrees Celsius. It's easy to convert these two, one into the other. So, for example, if we were talking about standard laboratory conditions, which is 25 degrees C, then the temperature in Kelvins would be 25 plus 273, which is 298 Kelvin. Obviously, if you know that we've increased um, the temperature of a particular gas from standard laboratory conditions, which is zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin, and we've increased that to 298 Kelvin, then we can have a, a similar change in the uh, pressure. If the pressure, for example, initially was um, 100 kilopascals, then it would be a simple matter of substituting these into the equation. 100 kilopascals would be your P1. Your T1 would be standard laboratory conditions of 273 degrees. And if we kept our volume and our number of moles the same, then we could work out what our P2 is by substituting them into the equation. I wonder if you can do that and I'll give you the answer in class tomorrow. Thanks for watching.